This tutorial describes how to use the OpenQuake engine and associated tools to perform volcanic scenarios. Starting from version 3.7, OpenQuake has this new capability thanks to the work carried out during the CRAPE project, the Collaborative Risk Assessment for Volcanoes and Earthquakes, led by the Global Earthquake Model Foundation, supported by the United States Agency for International Development and in collaboration with the Colombian Geological Survey. To perform volcanic scenarios in OpenQuake, we will need the hazard footprints input file. Users can assess risk for one or multiple volcanic burials among asphalt, lahars, pyroclastic density currents, and lava flow. An exposure model is also required as input data. The exposure model includes information regarding the location and number of the buildings, the occupants, the replacement cost, and any other attributes that we might consider important depending on the hazard period. For example, for ashfall, we might need to consider the roof types since the ash affects differently weak, moderate, or strong roofs. In order to assess the damage and losses of the exposed assets for volcanic ashfall, a vulnerability model is also required. In this case, the fragility model represents the roof damage probability given the ash load while the consequence model represents the loss ratio given the roof damage level. The other volcanic perils do not need a vulnerability model since OpenQuake assumes that the assets located inside the hazard footprints will be totally affected. Else, if the assets are located outside the footprint, then they are considered at no risk. This tutorial presents an example for the Nevado del Ruiz volcano in Colombia. The map shows the location of the volcano with a yellow star, along with the departments and municipalities, which are the administrative division of the country. Four hazard burials are considered in this tutorial. Starting with the asphalt, the hazard footprint is represented by the ash load at each discrete point in a uniformly spaced grid of 100 meters. Next, the lahar footprint is represented by a multi-polygon shapefile where the enclosed area is considered as affected by this period. Similarly, we can see the footprints for the pyroclastic density currents and the lava flow that are also represented by multi-polygonal shapes. Notice that the lava flow affects only the vicinities of the crater. An initial residential exposure model was available for Colombia as part of the Global Earthquake Risk Model Initiative released in December 2018. The model was later improved in the surroundings of the volcano in order to account for a better spatial distribution and to consider the roof type of the structures. In the map, the orange dots represent the urban buildings, which were estimated based on census data at block level. The blue dots represent the rural buildings. Since the rural information in the census was available for a resolution, not enough detail for volcanic risk assessment, Further improvements were applied to the model using additional datasets such as roads, rivers, nighttime lights, and population density distribution. Now, let's move to the OpenQuake tools. In the user interface, you have the option to run a calculation or press the Tools button. One of the available tools is the Input Preparation Toolkit that will help you to prepare the required input files in the OpenQuake format. This tool can be used to prepare files for earthquakes and volcano risk calculations. To prepare the files for a volcanic scenario, we will need to go to the Configuration File tab, and then to the Volcano Scenarios sub-tab. First, you will see a summary of the OpenQuake Volcano Calculator along with the necessary files to run the calculation. The required information will depend on the user selection. Remember that we have the option to assess risk for four volcanic burials in a single calculation, ashfall, lava flow, lahar, and pyroclastic density currents. Let's start the example by assigning a description of the calculation. Then, we select the hazard burials of interest. This tutorial, we will use the four burials. We can see the parameters that the user needs to provide along with help buttons that offer additional guidance. We support three input formats to describe the hazard footprints. In the case of Ashfall, 
we can see that users can provide the footprint with an H3D output file, with a plain CSV, or using a shapefile. There are example files available for each supported format that can help users to prepare their own data. In this example, the ash file will be a CSV file representing the ash load in kilopascals. We upload the file and then fill in the other required parameters such as the acid hazard distance and the ash wet amplification factor. Similarly, for the other variants, we have also three possible input files CSV, shapefile, or the specific output formats for softwares like QLabaha, LaharZ, and Titan2, respectively. In this example, we will use the shapefile formats for all of them. Next, we will upload the exposure model in the OpenQuick format, and since we are considering Ashfold, we will also need to upload the fragility model, representing in this case the roof collapse probability and the corresponding consequence model. Finally, we can press the download zip file that will contain all, necess all necessary input files. After downloading the file, we can go back to the engine tab and run the calculation by uploading the zip file. We can track the progress of the calculation with the console button. Once the calculation has finished, we can see a green color indicating the successfully completed calculation. In order to visualize the OpenQuake calculations and outputs, we can use the OpenQuake plugin for QGIS application. By pressing the play button, we will be able to see a similar interface as the one used before. We can see the completed calculation for the Nevada de Ruiz example. And at the bottom of the window, there is a list with the generator outputs. Let's explore the output called input files. Here we can visualize the hazard footprints using the calculation. Let's select only the ash fault footprint. We can see the discrete points with the ash load values assigned, and we can change the color scale to better visualize them. Then let's see the other footprints that were described by shape files. The footprints are overlapped, but we can turn off the different layers to see the extent of the affected areas. Now, let's go to the total risk output file and click on load table. Summary table with the total damage and losses for the scenario is displayed. For Ashfall, we can see results for dry and wet conditions. The column loss structural represents the economic losses, and the last two columns represent the number of buildings in each damaged state, buildings with no damaged roofs and buildings with collapsed roofs in our case. In the case of lahar, lava, and pyroclastic density currents, the column number indicates the total number of affected buildings, the next column the total number of affected occupants, and the next one the total economic losses. The last output to explore is the exposure plus risk. We can download a CSV file with all the information or click in load layer to interactively explore the output. We can choose to visualize the exposure or the risk. Since at the beginning of this tutorial we presented the exposure model, let's go directly to the risk results. There are multiple drop down menus to filter results according to our needs. The risk results depend on the hazard period. Let's see, for example, the results for Lahar. Then we choose the category of interest among number of buildings, economic losses, or occupants. We can also filter by taxonomy or any other tag or attribute included in the exposure model. In the case of Lahar, we are not interested in those filters, so we move to the point of aggregate by zone. With this option, we can create maps that aggregate the losses for given geometries. In this case, we will use the boundaries for the municipalities of the country. We click in OK and wait until the map is rendered. Depending on the size of the geometry file and the size of the calculation, the rendering might take a couple of seconds. We can adjust the coloring style and scale as desired, and in our case, we obtain a risk map presenting the number of affected people per municipality due to lahar occurring in El Ruiz volcano. 
With a similar procedure, we can also generate a risk map for asphalt, in this case in wet conditions, by plotting the number of collapse roofs at municipality level. Same procedure is used to create the maps for the other hazard perils or for the exposure model. Finally, let's download the CSV file, a table with the estimated losses per asset plus the information included in the exposure model is available. In this way, the user can see the detailed results, filter or aggregate values as needed. That concludes this tutorial about volcanic scenarios with the OpenQuick engine. For additional information, please contact us.